Whoa, 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 whoa. Why y'all so happy? Hey, you don't know. Charvette Mitchell is on the radio. It's time to get motivated, excited, and, and, and influenced. Why? It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, live from Richmond, Virginia. And now, here to motivate, excite, and influence you, Charvette, Charvette Mitchell. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia, but heard all across the world wide web. OMG, listen, we are super excited, uh, Tickle Pink, to have you joining in today, listening in, checking out the show. As always, we appreciate you. Listen, 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 this is what I want you to do. Make sure you're following me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Charvette. Let's connect on Facebook. Facebook, facebook.com slash Charvette. Listen, I have fallen in love with a new a new social media site called Periscope, uh, which allows you to do live video streaming from your iPhone. Um, they're getting ready to get the Androids in it also. But if you're on Periscope, um, you can look for me at under Charvette. All right, all right. Great, great, great. Uh, and, of course, always, Charvette.com gives you all the information that you need. So, Let me tell you about today's show. Our first guest is hanging out in the virtual green room. I'm going to be bringing him up uh, momentarily. Listen, back by popular demand, we have Gregory McDowell joining us. He is an author. He's a mentor. Uh, You heard about his first book, Choices. Well, he is back to talk about his second book, Chosen Path. And let me tell you, He keeps it real talk. If you follow him on Twitter, if you see me do any of his tweets, he keeps it real. uh, Talking about the mindset of addiction, of recovery, of redemption. And listen, he is not afraid of y'all, and he's not afraid to talk about the truth to help pull somebody out. So we're going to hear about his latest book, uh, Chosen Path. Uh, And then, then, then we're going to move into our second segment. Uh, We're excited to have uh, joining us Dr. Adrian. Adrienne Barry uh, is going to be joining us. She is, oh my goodness, has so many years of, 19 years of education experience, a past former teacher, a former, uh, oh my goodness, assistant principal, principal, oh my goodness, superintendent, uh, and the list goes on, just an educator, district level supervisor, uh, adjunct college professor, and she's here to talk about her latest release, African American Leaders from A to Z, People Who Should Bring out the leader in you and me and she's on a mission to really shine the light on unsung african-american leaders in our country because she doesn't think february does it february is not enough well, yes we recognize african-american history in the month of february we need it and our young people need it all year long so we're going to be talking to dr adrian very later on in the show all right so listen let's go ahead and jump right on into our first segment Again, back by popular demand, uh, Gregory McDowell, a friend of the show, who's always tweeting us, uh, always willing uh, to share information about the show. You heard about Choices. Now back, his latest release, Chosen Path, and he's here to tell you all about it. I'm bringing him up to the mic right now. Gregory, welcome back to the show. Uh, Thank you for having me, you know. Uh, It's a pleasure to be here. You know, right quick, I want to send a special thank you out to Kelly Bivens, You know, Kelly, uh, she designed my website. She started up my YouTube channel. She even had a hand in designing my book cover. So I just want to thank her and say God bless you, John. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. We love giving shout-outs and giving props uh, right there from the jump. I love it. I love it. So listen, um, so the last time we spoke with you, we talked about choices, and then now this latest book, Chosen Path, what would you say would be the main difference between the two books? Well, the difference between the two books is I introduce my readers to the mindset of an addict, you know, and now you're mm-hmm. going to experience some of my experiences, you know, and, and it's one thing that, you know, I want to say right quick because yeah. I, this is very, okay, addiction, addiction lives breathes, and feeds just like I do. But the only difference is addiction feeds off of my suffering, my pain, and my misery. And see, as it gets stronger, my mindset got weaker. Mm. You see, that's very important. 
you know, you've heard people say, oh, he or she is under the influence of drugs. They wrong. Right. They under the wow. influence of addiction. Okay, that's what they're under the influence of, addiction. Because addiction is what dictates every action of an addict. It's not the drugs. The drugs just wake up addiction and set addiction free. Okay? Wow. And so if someone's listening and they're saying, uh, let's start with the person that is, is suffering, uh, is is has the addiction um, that they're under the influence, what are what are steps to recognize number one that you are an addict that you are addicted when you spend up all your money you know when mm-hmm. you when you run around with crowds you shouldn't be running around when you're hanging in areas that you should be in you know when you're trying to manipulate every situation you know when you you're telling unnecessary lies you know Ooh. you know the, one thing about addiction is all real. I, I was in denial. I, I didn't have a problem. Mm-hmm. I'm just having fun. You know, everybody saw my problem except me, you know, and I, I denied it all the way. You know, I can stop this when I get ready. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I can turn this loose when I get ready. But it was years later, I'm still doing this same old dumb, stupid stuff. So I am addicted, you know. And was there an event or a life experience that made you say, okay, I, I, this is not something I can just walk away or put down. It has a hold on me. No, you can't You can't walk away or just put it down. You, you, you're going to need help. You know, you're mm-hmm. going to need help uh, from a power that's greater than yourself. You know, now, whatever it is that you believe in, you know, that's where you're going to get your help from. Um, it's like it's like this. It's like this. Let's say you're walking into darkness, right? Mm-hmm. You're pure. Mm-hmm. You're pure, but you you walk into darkness. Now, the deeper you walk into darkness, the tighter the hole is that that darkness has on you. The further you get into darkness, the tighter that hole gets. But then you realize, oh no, I don't want to be here. So you try to break free. But you can't mm. break free because, see, that darkness don't want to let you go. See, that it's that darkness job to consume you, okay, to swallow you, to eat you, and that's why it's so hard to break free on your own. You want to turn, you want to turn loose, but the darkness don't want to turn you loose. And that's just how addiction is. It doesn't want to turn you loose because, see, like I said, as it gets stronger, mm-hmm. you get weaker. You get weaker. Physically, and most important, you get weaker mentally. You get weaker mentally, you know. Wow. And go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say for those that you know be, may be listening and they've seen someone under the influence of addiction, and they just said, "Well, they just need to get their lives together. They just need to clean it up." It's not that easy. No, it's not. It's not because when, when I when I made the choice to. Get my life together, you know. I prayed. I asked for strength. I asked for courage. But yeah. see what's important about after that prayer. When I get up off of my knees, I have to be looking for that opportunity that God presents to me to display the courage that I already have to 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 use the strength that He's already given me. Okay. And, and, mm-hmm. and that's very important because I, I have to be honest with you. I thought all I had to do was pray that God just was going, okay, straighten him out. But I right, have to do right. The work. I, I, have, I, I realize that I have to do the work. And the most important thing is I have to be aware where my opportunity and chance presents itself for, for me to display what I already have that I'm asking for. So you would say that anyone that is under the influence of addiction has what they need to get out of it within themselves. Right. You, you, the, the power is already within you. You just got to make that choice. See, you got to make that choice. Hmm. You got to make that choice. Now, you know, I might, I might step on a few toes when I make this statement right here. That's okay. I don't have the, 
I don't have a doctor in front of my name, and I don't have uh-huh. PhD behind it. But I got common sense. Mm-hmm. Now, you can't tell me that addiction is a disease. I don't believe that. Because, mm. number one, nobody never prescribed me any medication for it. And that's how you combat diseases, with medication, right? That's true. Okay, right? So it's a choice. I chose to use drugs, okay? I made a choice to stop. So so how, how can I say that? That's a disease. <laughs> My God, listen, you have you may not have doctor in front of your name, but you have the voice of experience, VOE, behind your name uh, because you were and you you say yourself you were addicted, uh, you were an addict for several years, but you came through, you recovered, uh, and you are restored, and you are able to tell somebody else about it. So that in and of itself uh, makes you qualified to make your own statements about it. Listen, so we see you coming in on the phone lines. Hey there. You're listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. This is our author spotlight with Gregory McDowell. Check out Chosen Path. We're talking about it, talking about the mindset of addiction. All right, Gregory. So one thing you I saw in your bio on your blog said um, substance abuse can lead to a life of false dreams and hopes of easy money. How often yes. has money played a role in, in, in our communities around addiction? Okay, well, well see, that's the lure. See, that's mm-hmm. the lure. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out here. You know, I'm, I'm going to get me some fast money. See, what I try to instill in the youth is you can, you can set out with your own plan, okay? And mm-hmm. it sounds mm-hmm. good. Oh, and and, you, and you, you, you think that you can make it work. But see, what you have to understand is when you're dealing with the streets, the streets has its own plans for you. Oh, wow. I may set out, listen, listen, I may set out to go in the streets to be a hustler, which I did when I first got into the streets. That was my plan. I'm going to go out here, man, I'm going to stack this money. You know, I'm going to show these suckers how to really do it. But you know what? The streets showed me how it was really done. See, I got labeled. A junkie, a baser, a rockhead, a rock monster, never a hustler, okay? But I went out. That that was what I wanted to be, okay? Ah, but, mm-hmm. You know, I ended up an addict. And all it was was it's, it's, the, it's the lure. See, see, you get lured by so many things. You get lured by the money. You get lured by the pretty girls. You get lured by the cars. You get lured by the clothes. You get lured by the jewelry. And when you go out there and try to grab those things, you end up with something else. Mm. In your blog, you say, time continued to pass me by as I puffed on a lie. So that's a part of that, that living that lie. Yeah, yeah, because... When I'm when I was stuck on stupid, guess what? Mm-hmm. The little kids were still growing up, you know. Oh wow! The little kids still growing up. Every time I went to jail and came back, oh you you used to be five, but now you eight. The next time I went to jail, you was eight, but now you thirteen. You know what I'm saying? And you want to know what's so disappointing and and and, and sad? They follow the same path that I was on. Oh, you know, wow. so, you know, even though you're in the hood and you see this destruction, you know, you see what this does to, to Joe. You see what this lifestyle does to Carrie. You still go in that direction, you know. You still go in that direction, and, and that's what's yeah. so sad. You know? Wow. And, and I, I, I did it myself. You know, mm-hmm. I witnessed mm-hmm. I witnessed my auntie destroy herself with heroin. With, used to help her. You understand what I'm saying? Used to mm-hmm. help her with her feet. Saw what it was doing to her. Okay? But I still chose that path. Let me read something to you real quick, you and the listeners. Okay? Yes, yes. My fly was slippery. I was starting my plunge to the very bottom of the pit. My fate was sealed once I placed that glass pipe upon my lips. I was aware I was doing wrong, and I knew the path it would take me on. But I insisted on exploring the unknown. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. 
Does that sound right. like a person exercising rational thinking? No. I knew what this thing could do. I knew the power that this was capable of, 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 of having over me, okay? But I yeah. still stepped into that unknown. So in, in my book, I try to show you the mindset of an active addict. You know, they think mm-hmm. they got all the sense. They think they can tell you anything, you can go for it. You know, the irrational is the rational. There is no rational when it comes to an addict. They don't use common sense. They don't use logic. They don't use their intellect. The impossible is possible when you're dealing with an addict. You know, I always tell people, it's impossible for you to ice skate up a hill. But Mm. any any addict that you meet, He's going to tell you he can prove you wrong. The rational so, becomes irrational. Yeah. So it's almost like a yeah. flipped reality. Everything is the opposite. Everything is the opposite. The, 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 somebody can come to somebody. Somebody can come to me when I was in my addiction with the stupidest idea, and me and him together, we can pull that off. We can pull it off. We can make it happen. We ain't thinking about no consequences. We not considering mm. where the people might the people might be home. Well, if they is home, they might have a gun. We ain't thinking about none of that. But see, here's the dangerous part about that. Okay, here's the dangerous part about that. You put yourself or allow yourself to be put in a situation so your freedom can be took for life, or somebody mm-hmm. can take your life. Yeah. See, that's why. It's so it, 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 it's dangerous. It's also dangerous because I never allow myself to think. Okay, that sounds good. Let me crawl through these people window. I don't care if they're home or not. It's something in there I want. It's something in there I need. It's something in there I got to have because I need my medication and I need my medication right now. Okay, but you got to understand that wasn't me. That was the addiction that dwells within me. My goodness. Listeners, I know you are sitting on the edge of your seat. You are sitting on the edge of your couch right now listening to Gregory McDowell. Uh, His newest book, his latest book is available on Amazon, other places online, Chosen Path, really getting into the mindset of addiction. Uh, Gregory, I believe we have a caller. Uh, Now, caller, I'm coming to you. You you may just be listening, but it looks like you have a question. Uh, Your phone number ends with 9737, and it appears you have a question. Question. We're coming and we're opening your line up. Hi, you're live on the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Do you have a question or comment for our guest? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name's V. Uh, I do have a question uh, for Gregory. Uh, I really relate to the story, uh, particularly regarding addiction. Uh, I'm yeah. a recovering drug addict. Uh, I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. Um, I'm, I'm in treatment. I've been in treatment for the last decade. Um, one of the things that, that helps me is having a steady routine. Um, I wonder if I can get any advice. I know this might sound strange, but something that, that's been with me for the last decade is um, I, I listen to uh, the Howard Stern show, as strange mm-hmm. as that sounds, but it's, it's been a rock for me. And um, I, I get a bit emotional um, talking about this because, it seems it could be the last year on his on his contract. He could be retiring, and that's something that for me will be will be going away. And uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just very hard when you when you've had this routine that works, and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden it's at risk of going away. <laughs> Steve, Steve, Steve. Steve. Oh. No. Steve. Excuse me, Steve. Yes. Steve, listen to me. First of all, grab your composure, my man. Okay. Oh. I, I, and I want you to listen to this. You need to listen to this, okay? You need to listen to this because it's very important. It's not how it's stern that it's not how stern that's keeping you on track. 
it's you, Steve. See, Steve, what you what what I had to realize and understand was the power for me to overcome. I already possess. I just had to tap into it. See, you already got the power, Steve. You just got to tap into it, Steve, and remain tapped into it, which you already have, okay? It's, it's not Howard Stern, Steve, that's keeping you straight and on track. It's Steve, okay? It's Steve that has to deal with the sweats in the middle of the night. It's Steve that has to deal with those funny thoughts that come through your mind throughout the day. It's Steve that when he smells a smell that reminds him of what he used to do, he has to keep pushing along. It's not Howard Stern. It's you, Steve. I just, I just don't want him to retire. I just, I don't want to go back to the way it was without him. Oh, man. So let's look. Do you know Steve, Greg? No, I don't Do know you, Steve. But, okay, Steve, can you can you Steve. connect my with Greg? My name is Steve. My name is Z. Steve. Can you can you hold on and then what we can do if you can connect with if you can connect with Gregory I believe he can help you walk through this Are you on Twitter Can you can you inbox Gregory on Twitter He can help I believe he can help you walk through this Are you Are you on yes. and Let's do this I'm I'm gonna. I'm going to do oh, this. God. I'm going to do this. TV. I'm going to put you in the weight room for a second. I and uh, what we're going to do is um, allow him to. I don't want him. I know his comp- composure. He wants to get himself together. But um, Gregory, we'll get you connected um, with him. Okay, sure. No problem. Yeah. So that so Steve, you're on you are still on and I just have you your line muted right now so that we can make sure Gregory tell them, um and, and him in particular, how they can get in contact with you, connect with you because you mentor people and you help you and you are <laughs> proof that you can recover. You can get in touch with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh on Twitter I'm at, at Choices Gregory. You know, when I, you can email me personally at themistocles at gmail.com, themistocles, D-A-M-I-S-K-L-E-E-Z, at gmail.com. Okay, and on Facebook? Um, on the Gregory McDowell, and it's also themistocles, too. So, you know, you can get in touch okay. with me in, in those uh, ways. And so this is certainly we are sensitive, um, sensitive to this because this is real. This is reality. Um, this is what you can hear um, his heart's cry. But I, uh, I am so glad that you gave him the advice that what he has, what is in him, is what will get him through this. Um, and so he brought up a point about having routines that have kind of helped him. So it sounds like. Um, you know, maybe another establishing another routine. Any other tips you would have for people that are are going through that are, you know, maybe feeling what he's feeling? Any other suggestions? Well, you got to stay focused. You know, you got to stay focused, and you have to understand that you're going to be dealing with addiction to the day you get put in the ground. You know, the the the, the, the worst statement I've ever heard from somebody that's living, is I defeated addiction. You know, they have these commercials on TV. I defeated addiction. How, how can you say that? How can you how can you say that you defeated addiction when you still connected with addiction? Just because I have five years clean, the addiction ain't going nowhere. It's, it's still within me. And believe me, every chance it gets, it whispers in my ear. You know, every chance it gets, it 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 produces the kind of woman that I I, I liked when I was in addiction before me. You know, it, mm-hmm. and every chance it gets, it reminds me, hey, wonder what they doing over there. But one thing I can say, as time goes on, those whispers they get they get lower. You know, th- those urges they 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 tend to get weaker. You understand what I'm saying? So 
Yes. It's never, it's never going to go anywhere. It's always there. It's just how I choose to combat it. You know, and, that's and you also you definitely say I do want to bring out that you definitely say uh, how God was very critical in this, and that you cried out to God in your low state, and you didn't even know he you were wondering if he was going to hear you. You didn't know if he was going to hear you, and and you say that he he heard every single word, and that God has really helped turn your life around. Uh, I, I want to leave people with hope, and, and so can you talk a little bit about you know really how you, you were giving the credit to God on this? Well, God did it. You know, God, God, like I said earlier, God provided the opportunity and the chance. But I had to do the work. Okay. Yeah. He heard my cries. He heard my cries. But you see, what I realized and understand today, I wasn't ready. That's why I had to cry for 26 years. That's why I had to scream his name for 26 years. Because, see, I wasn't ready. But when I got ready, he set me free. See, I didn't. I, I'm not gonna sit here and tell y'all that I set myself free. Oh no! If I tell y'all that, I'll be a bold faced lie. Oh, God set me free. God set Steve free. God set all those addicts that are in recovery. He set them free. Okay. But yeah, here's here's the thing. We have to do the work. He's not gonna do the work for us. Okay, he done did his job. I'm gonna put it to you like this right here. He done put he done put that gorilla in the cage. Okay, but you know mm-hmm. what he did? He left Gregory with the key. Okay, okay, and you want to know what that key is? That key is choice. Do I choose to let that beast out, or do I choose to ignore that beast and keep him locked up? Because he already know the devastation that he gonna cause when he get unlocked. Blank. Yeah. Wow. And so, Chosen Path, uh, listeners, again, uh, by Gregory McDowell, is um, the book that you want to get a hold of. Um, but again, you can you can hear we just you know this is not made up. Uh, and I normally don't even take callers, um, but I, what I do you know want to say is that we we at the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show believe in prayer, and we believe in the power of prayer, and we believe that God can and will help get you through whatever that whatever steps you have to take um with that and so I want to, before we go to a commercial break, I do want to give you one more opportunity, Gregory, to give um your contact information so that people um can connect with you and get whatever find out whatever resources whatever help they can get okay, you can contact me on LinkedIn. You can contact me on Facebook, Gregory McDowell, Domesticles. You can contact me on Twitter at Choices Gregory. Okay, and I want to say something real quick. Yes. Years ago, I never visioned that I would be an author with two books up under my belt. But today shows me that no matter what situation a person is in in life, that can change. It can change. Absolutely. You know, and I want everybody out there to to really think about what I just said. No matter what situation you in in life, it can change tomorrow. You don't have to remain there. You know, thank you for having me on your show, Chavella. You know, I really appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you. And I- thank you. Thank you so Keep much, and um, listeners. Oh, thank you so much, and listeners. Before we um, go to commercial break, I do want to say a quick prayer for the the caller, uh, Father God. Right now, we thank you because your love never fails us. Your love never gives up on us. Your love never fails, and so we ask that you let the caller feel your love right now. If they feel abandoned, if they feel like they don't know what to do, the next step to take, God, let your love cover the caller, God. Give the caller direction of what resources to go to. Put people around him that will support him in his recovery and continued recovery right now in the name of Jesus. And we know that whatever we ask in your name, that you hear us when we pray. You hear every request. You hear every every cry in the name of Jesus. And we thank you because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Thank you. Amen. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Charvette will be back after this. Spiritual Food for Thought. 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day by LaTanya Boyd consists of inspirational messages that offer daily words of empowerment, promote spiritual growth, and development in the Lord Jesus Christ for your day-to-day living. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day. Available now on Kindle, ebook, and paperback. Log on to www.latiboyd.com. Hello, we are 123jobzone.com, an online job search portal. We are user-friendly, and if you're searching for a job, with us, it's easy as 123. Step 1. Go to www.123jobzone.com and register as a job seeker. Step 2. Once registered, upload your resumes. Step 3. Get connected with employers looking for people like you who are ready and willing to work. Don't forget to follow 123jobzone on Twitter and Facebook to find out more about our upcoming job fairs. What are you waiting for? Stop by 123jobzone.com today. Good luck with your job search. Does your church or ministry have a website? Are you a local artist or author that has an established web presence? If you answer no to any of these questions, you're letting countless opportunities pass you by. Hi, I'm Charvette Mitchell. Mitchell Productions was created with your needs in mind. We will provide you with stylish and economical online marketing solutions. From email marketing to your own website, Mitchell Productions caters to ministries, nonprofits, small businesses, and special events. Check out our portfolio at Mitchell-Productions.com. In today's world, a website is not a luxury, it's a necessity. And Mitchell Productions can create your website in a stylish manner at a very economical price. Don't let business, customers, or new congregation members pass you by. Visit Mitchell Productions today at www.Mitchell-Productions.com. Let us showcase your organization to the world. She's here to motivate, excite, and influence you. She's Charvette Mitchell. Charvette Mitchell. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show with in-depth interviews from today's leading authors, gospel artists, stars that you want to know about. And now, Charvette Mitchell. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back again to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia, uh, but heard all across the world wide web. And the goal of my show, the goal of this show is to motivate, excite, and influence. Our goal is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we trust and believe that what was covered in the first segment, uh, talking to author Gregory McDowell about his book, The Chosen Path, uh, The Mindset of Addiction. We trust that it will influence, that it will motivate to do better, to do go in another direction, and to open up and give awareness to addiction. And so um, we thank you for those that are that are tuned in and those that are still on the phone lines. We we appreciate you. So we're moving into our second segment here. Uh, we have uh, hanging out in the virtual green room. I'm bringing her up to the mic uh, shortly. Uh, Dr. Andrea Berry. Uh, she has a book out, a newest release out, African American Leaders from A to Z, People Who Should Bring Out the Leader in You and in Me. Uh, she has an experience extensive uh, career in education, over 19 years experience. She's been a teacher, an assistant principal, a principal, a district level supervisor, a college professor, a presenter, and published uh, author. And she's here really promoting uh, the un Unsung heroes, if you will. I know TV One has a show called Unsung, but the un- unsung African American leaders in our country, uh, because she's on a mission really to help our youth uh, know who they are and who they are and what legacy they have come from. So, coming up to the mic right now, Dr. Adrian Barry, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing just great. I'm very excited to be here to share with you all, and I I, I appreciate the opportunity. 
Great, great, great. We're glad to have you. Uh, and so I know you are a busy, busy uh, person. You currently serve as an instructional <laughs> supervisor of equity, diversity, special programs, and Eng- English language learners. <sighs> okay, let me take a break after saying that. How do you balance? <laughs> how do you balance it all? Well, you know, my my career started in the same county where I am now. So I I've had I I've had the distinct pleasure of being able to move up the 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 chain, you know, slowly and get some really good training. So balancing, you know, as as you as you gain experience, you know, you, you get more experience. And so, you know, the positions didn't all start out that way. They kind of progressed, you know. I, I did well with something, and then it was like, okay, let's add a little bit more responsibility and then a little bit more responsibility. So it was a gradual release of um, responsibility. And, you know, as moms, as as educators, we always have a lot of balls up in the air, so it's not it's nothing new to, to, have, <laughs> to have a lot on your plate as a woman. <laughs> What? Yes, 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 yes. And salute. We're still saluting and celebrating all mothers. Uh, so we're just going gonna to keep the celebration going That's around mothers. That's right. <laughs> so how did you yeah. get into the education field initially? Well, I, I'm I'm blessed to be surrounded by a string of teachers. My father was an educator. You know, my mother worked in a college setting for years. You know, I have aunts and uncles who were educators, Um PE educators, health educators. So I come from a string of of educators where education is really important in our family. So, you know, I always tease people and say it it was the family business at at, at one point. So um, (laughs) I kind of had a natural love for it because I was around it all the time. But, you know, now it's certainly after this many years become my passion because, you know, it's something that I, I do to live and live to do. Oh wow! And, and I love that your bio says you you strive to make educating youth a smooth process. Do you feel that it is bumpy at times? I feel like educating youth, especially the youth, especially in the the era that we're in today, can become increasingly difficult for a litany of reasons. But I think one of the the things that we have to remember is, you know, as as the years progress. Things change, people change, situations mm-hmm. change. So, so how we handle our youth have to change with that as well. And I think it, it's difficult often for us to just say, you know, well, when I was little, this is the way it was done, and it worked for me. But, I, but I think as time goes on and, and different things happen, we have to kind of adjust with the times. Can be bumpy, but I think mm-hmm. you know that whole idea of having. Uh, a plan and, and making sure you work your plan, your work and work your plan. All of those cliches hold true to, to raising children and, and making sure that we're doing the best that we can to educate. All oh, right, because they are yeah. our most vital resource. They yes, are our most they valuable are. resource. Yes, they are. Now you yes, gotta you gotta let us know. Are they? Do you ever leave work and say, "Oh my goodness, can I do this another day?" And then you <laughs> then you get your your energy back at night, and you're like, "Okay, I can face I, this." I, I have again. to be honest with you. I really do. There are some days I say, "My gosh, those children made me earn my money today." <laughs> there yeah, are days yeah. that I leave and I say, "My goodness." But it certainly is a labor of love. And working with children, there's nothing that I would rather do than work with young people. There really is. And I, I can't think of anything I would have done differently if I were to start over. It, it is truly a passion and a labor of love. You know, I love to see young people succeed. I love to see the faces of parents when young people succeed. So it, it's, oh. it's a succession that I've devoted my life to, and and I just I just can't see myself doing anything else. I really can't. That's a gift. So I, it's, it's really yeah, it's a gift. I, I find I find myself looking for different ways to do the same thing. That's how you know that that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing because you're not looking for something else to do. You're looking for a different way to do the same thing. <laughs> so. I enjoy oh, right. influencing kids. I do. I do. Wonderful, wonderful. We need it all throughout our society. And so yeah. how did you decide, okay, I want to publish a book? 
So what what was the spark of that? Well, honestly, to be honest with you, I'm a mother of two very young children. I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. My six-year-old son, you know, I've always told him to be a leader and not a follower. And, you know, we, we, we always are talking about leaders and who they are and what they do and what they look like and what they sound like. And, you know, I... For for a four year old and a six year old, sometimes it's a, it's difficult to articulate some of those words that are not necessarily on their level yet. So I struggled to find information that was age appropriate and cultural culturally appropriate, if if mm-hmm. you will, to to teach my son about. So I kind of said, you know what, I'm going to write my own. You know, I know enough about being a leader to be able to influence my son and help him find people to want to aspire to be like. And and that's kind of where the birth of my first book came from. It came from me wanting to teach my son. And and so I, I looked for male figures and I mm-hmm. researched them, and then I tried to find words that described them. And, you know, we – We kind of took one or two a day, and I I kept on doing it until I molded it into what I wanted it to be. And then it eventually just kind of took shape and became a book. You know, it it was initially me just trying to find some material to teach my son about being a leader and people who are great leaders. And then it, it evolved into a story and, and then and then was born the first book, Stand Tall, Stand Proud, and Aspire. So that that's the book that I had dedicated to my son. And then, of course, I have, I have a four-year-old that's right behind him, a, a, a little girl, and I, I, I wanted to do the same thing for her. So that's how I initially started writing. And then I kind of, you know, said, hey, this is a way, this is another, yet another avenue that I can utilize to get to a variety of kids. So it started out being for my children, but I felt like it was valuable enough to share it with all children. So that's how I started the whole process of becoming a writer. It was just kind of me trying to help my children. And then I said, hey, this can help someone else too. Yeah, I love that. I yeah. love that. And yeah. it's a, a learning a tool, an education tool. People learn mm-hmm. from books, uh, you know, on their own all the time. So I, I, I love that. And so tell listeners if they are saying, oh, I want to get a hold of that, that first book. We're going to talk about the second one in detail, but how can okay. they get a hold of your books? Well, all of my books are available on Amazon.com and wherever books are sold, Barnes & Noble. Um and um, create space. Um, they're all available, but the best and fastest way is Amazon.com, and they're available in both Kindle form and paperback. And um, if you go on, the first one is entitled Stand Tall, Stand Proud, and Aspire, and it is a book to motivate young men of today. And then the second one is called um, Sparkle and Shine, and it's a book to motivate young women of today. So those two books, are, are are my first two. The one that we're probably going to talk about most today is the newest one, which is the African American yeah. Leaders book. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's let's talk. Jump right on into uh, African American mm-hmm. leaders from A mm-hmm. to Z. People who mm-hmm. should bring out the leader in you and me. And I love that it is so beautifully illustrated. Oh gosh, I, I I was very blessed to to come across a young lady who was so talented with the illustrations. She was able to bring all of my pictures to life and and just and and just make this such a a blessing to young children because I I truly believe that how a book is visualized by a child is how they're mm-hmm. going to receive it. And she just did a beautiful job capturing everything that I asked her to capture. And, um, you know, it, the story was meant to be um, a lesson through the alphabet. It, it started out, you know, let's, let's find some leaders that begin with all the letters of the alphabet. And, you know, and, and it's amazing what things morph into after you get started. It, it starts off this <laughs> small project, and then it, I mean, it starts uh-huh. off this small idea and becomes this huge project. So 26 letters later, I have this book with all of these, as you said, perfect word, un, unsung heroes. It was important 
for me to find leaders that kids don't always necessarily learn about. You know, I think it's, I think it's epic for kids to learn about the Harriet Tubman and Mm -hmm. the Martin Luther King. But I also think there are lots of other leaders, some alive and some not alive, that kids also need to know about. So I figured going through the alphabet, you know, I had 26 opportunities to capture people that kids don't necessarily hear about in February or every day for for African American History Month. So I wanted to find people that, okay, I don't know who that is. You know, I, I mm-hmm. use Althea, Althea Gibson. Many kids didn't, don't know her. They don't know that she was not only a tennis player, but she was also a player. So I, I, I was able to find people that were not your everyday leaders and, and capitalize on that and, and give it some poetic language and, and make it come to life for kids with beautiful illustrations. And, and I'm really excited about that. Oh, I love it. I love it. And listeners, uh, for just a sample, just a taste of the illustrations, you can jump over to Amazon.com uh, and, and click on Look Inside, and you'll see like two examples of the illustrations uh, right in there. And who's your illustrator? I want to give them a shout out. Her name is Jasmine Mills. I am so proud of that young lady. She, Like I said, she took everything that I said, and, you know, sometimes I know I was a bit sparse. I, I, I want this. I want, I want, I want that. <laughs> uh-huh. and, and I tell tell you everything I said she exceeded my expectations she's a she's a great little illustrator her name is Jasmine Mills all right shout out to Jasmine and so as you were pulling the 26 together did you find oh um oh I want to include this oh I'm 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 running out of letters (laughs) oh yes you know it's so difficult because some letters, you may have five or six different leaders, and you're like, oh, I want them all, but I can't do that. The book is it's a children's book. It can't be too long. So, you know, I didn't want to go much beyond 26 pages because the attention span of the average early childhood student, 26 pages right. is a lot. So I said, oh, my gosh. So, yes, there, there was a struggle with a few. I was looking for, um, you know, letters. Some of the letters, you know, there, there, were, there was B and there was this person and it was that mm. person, and well, which one do I use? And and so, you know, what it came down to is it came down to how poetically I could fit in the description because I, I, I thought it was very important for the words in the book to rhyme because I wanted it to be catchy for young kids. And research tells us that the best way for reading readiness is to rhyme words. So I wanted to make sure that I made all of this stuff rhyme. And sometimes I would get a leader and I'd be like, oh, this is a perfect one, but I couldn't rhyme. So I had to find something else. It it, it truly, like I said, it started off this small task and ended up this huge project. But at the end, I was very proud. I really was. Awesome. And so what's the perfect age group uh, for this book? Well, you know, I – I think my target age group was late first grade to third grade, but it's certainly not a book that that a fourth or fifth grader couldn't enjoy because a lot of the vocabulary is on a higher level. And I did that on purpose because Mm -hmm. I, I I think it's important that we expose young kids to big vocabulary, whether it's developmentally appropriate or not, um, what what may be developmental twenty years ago may not may may be different now, and and I think it's important oh, yeah. that the more you speak to kids and expose them to big words, they'll use them and they'll use them in context and they'll use them correctly. It's all about the models and it's all about the expectations. We know when they're little, they're like sponges. Research tells us the best time to teach a second language is in the first five years of life. So I mean, the more language you expose children to the more you're going to see how much they can absorb. So when writing a book, I don't necessarily stick to a perfect age group. Because it's an Uh alphabet book, I would say it's an early childhood book, but I I certainly wouldn't limit it to just first through third grade. But when I initially started, that was my intent, between first and third grade. But then as that time went on, I saw that, oh, this, this certainly can fit in. You know, specifically if you're doing an African-American history study of some sort, 
definitely could fit into older children and, and be adapted up or down. So I wanted to make sure that that versatility was there, and, and I think we, we've captured it. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased about that. And I'm sure uh, us adults could learn from it as well. <laughs> I <laughs> learned a few things myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Adrian Barry, uh, Oprah, uh, Oprah, say your last name for me. The... Ofer, like Gopher Ofer. without the G. Ofer, yes. Yes. Okay, there you go. Thank mm-hmm. you, thank you. Mm-hmm. And what's your main um, your main website they can go visit? My main website is www.andreaberryofer.com, and on there you can see um, my book trailer for my first book. And, you know, there's some coming events and, and definitely can see um, some of my work. Um, you can also visit me on my Facebook page at facebook.com backslash Dr. Andrea Berry, and that will give you a great sampling of what's going on in my author world as well. All right. Keep up there. Keep up. So <laughs> as uh, with, with the extensive uh, career in education and, and, and published authors, author now, how – critical is it for parents to be involved, integrated in their child's learning and and schoolwork? Parents need to be the paramount piece of a child's learning. You are, as a parent, your first child's teacher. And, you know, mm-hmm. teachers have a great a great job. There's not a better job in the world to influence the lives of kids, but they can't do it without the help of parents. And and parents set the stage for us. They explain to children the importance of school, and they model the behavior for what we expect in school. And they work in collaboration with the teachers to make the education experience pleasant for children. So it's definitely a partnership. And parents have to be a part of that partnership. You know, they they have homework to do every night. They have to read with their children. It is their parental duty to say, what did you do at school today? Tell me something that you learned. All of those things are pieces of the puzzle of a well-rounded child. It's not just that, not, that's not just that 8 to 3 o'clock where they go to school and they sit in a chair and they learn. Education looks very different now. It's, it's very widespread, and it, and it yeah. encompasses a lot of people and a lot of pieces. But, you know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. It indeed does because you have parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles who are doing things to help build, that are part of the village to help build that child. So parents need to be the children's advocate. They need to be the children's cheerleader. But they also need to be in the corner of the teacher to show the child we're a team and we're all doing this together. And we do it better if we all do it together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it, it's Absolutely. so important. It's so important. So Are it, you, you finding – yeah, go right ahead. No, 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 go ahead, you go. I I was just going to say, are you finding that there are a lot of different learning styles um, more so now than they were before, like children that learn at different paces or different ways? I think I think we've always had diverse learners. I, I, I think learning has always been a diverse thing. I think we're mm-hmm. learning how to address those diverse needs better. We're looking, you know, we're looking at things like technology. We're looking at things like small groups. We're looking at um, one-to-one situations. We're looking at um, peer reviews and peer learning. We're, we're looking at large groups, small groups, I, I think we're looking at things better. We're getting better at it, and and we're okay. putting forth different facets of effort than we may have before. Not that we're working any less or any more, but I think we're working differently. I think it's important that we're we're not just looking at, okay, Johnny does not know his alphabet. Why doesn't Johnny know his alphabet? Does Johnny not know any of his alphabet, or does Johnny know his letters and not his sounds? I think we're beginning to dissect learning in a different way, and 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 when we can do that, it's it's almost like the analogy of 
fixing a car. He can't mm-hmm. fix the car when you go into the mechanic as a woman and you say, it's making this noise that's going, nah, 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 nah. well, they, they have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but when you lift up that, when you lift up that hood and say, do you hear that? I think it's coming from right there. I don't know what it is, but that's what I'm talking about. I just think that we're getting a little bit more precise with, you know, how to teach children. And that's why you're seeing children go further quicker. I think that is the reason why. It's not necessarily that children are smarter now than they were 20 years ago or teachers Mm. are are better now than they were. I, I think learning just looks different now. Awesome. And so if you have a child that's out there that maybe they're learning technique, number one, find out, try to figure out what their learning technique is because there may be other options for you Mm -hmm. because little Johnny can't get the ABCs, but he knows the latest Kanye rap or Mm Jay-Z and can sing it after hearing it one time. Absolutely. And what I tell parents all the time is there's three R's in motivation and learning. And those three R's are relationship building, role models, and relentlessness. You have to be Mm. relentless about your child's learning. You have to be your child's role model, and you definitely have to build those relationships. It's not enough to just be your child's mother or your child's father. You have to have a special relationship with your child about learning to make it fun for them. Because if if they think that you think it's fun, then, you know, whatever my mommy says, it has to be right, right? <laughs> that, mm-hmm. That's the way most children are. At least when, at least when they're little. <laughs> right. When they're little, whatever mommy says is right. So as they get older, then nothing mommy says is right. <laughs> but, but you know, right. when, when you have those young people where they're very influenceable, you have to take advantage of that. And 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 I think you know we're gonna find more and more that p- books like these, these motivational type books are going to be the way to go, specifically with our boys, them getting to see role models that look like them and that are not necessarily always, and it's not always about race either, not just African-Americans. It can also be non-African-American leaders. In my first book, I I highlight people like John F. Kennedy and Bill Gates Mm -hmm. because I think it's important that kids understand that they've done some great things. But I also highlight our African-American brothers and sisters like Steve Harvey because he's built an empire, and I think kids need to see. He started out rough, but he's got it together now. And not only does he have it together, he's a perfect role model for our children. And, 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 you know, he gets on television and he's sincere. So I I think kids need to see those types of people, and they need to see those good things as as they're learning, because that is what makes, you know, learning fun for kids, realism, you know, the relationships, the role models, the relentlessness. So I I think that, that that is definitely what we need to focus on. Well said. And I heard uh, Les Brown say in a uh, motivational speech at a, in a corporate setting, he said that children need to be able to look at us and see themselves in the future. They need Absolutely. to be able to look look at us and see their future, see themselves in the future. So right Absolutely. in line there. So my last question for you, the goal of my mm-hmm. show is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we want to know mm-hmm. what continues to motivate you. I am motivated by seeing young people progress. You know, whether it's a kindergartner that learns how to tie his shoe or whether it's a 12th grader that walks across the stage. I am motivated by the progressiveness of our young people because those are the people that are going to be taking care of us <laughs> when we're elderly, and those are the people that are the future. They're the people that are ahead. You know, we, we, we as adults look at them and say, in 10 years, You'll be taking care of me instead of me taking care of you. So I think it's important to invest in them, mm-hmm. and 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 I'm 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 motivated by that investment. You know, I, I'm I'm tied to it. it. It it is what drives me. All right, it's what drives you. Great, great, great. Uh, one more time, tell listeners how they can get a hold of your books. All three of my books are available at Amazon.com. 
Stand Tall, Stand Proud, and Aspire is the first one. Sparkle and Shine is the second one. And the third one, African American Leaders from A to Z, People Who Should Bring Out the Leader in You and Me. So please get your copies for the summer, summer reading, the best way to keep kids from falling behind. I'm so excited, and I hope you enjoy yes. them. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for stopping by the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. All thank right, you. listeners. Oh, you too. Thank you. All right, listeners, that's going to be a wrap uh, for today's show. As always, check back with us every single Tuesday uh, where we bring you phenomenal uh, shows, phenomenal guests. And certainly today was no different. Uh, Follow and connect with me, Charvette.com. Be blessed. Live from Richmond, Virginia, you have been listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Connect with her at Charvette.com. And until next week, stay motivated, excited, and influenced. The Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, signing off.